Nigeria's banking and finance sector has a new sheriff in town in the form of Central Bank Governor Yemi Cardoso. He outlined his vision for the banking sector at the 58th Annual Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria dinner with the following highlights, discontinuing direct quasi-intervention activities, seeking recapitalization of the banks, and returning to orthodox monetary policy. Reactions have been pouring in with the former head of the CIBN, Professor Shegun Ajibola, sharing his thoughts on the way forward for Nigeria's banking sector. He was on our flagship morning show yesterday. Next up, Nigeria's bank director will weigh in on the regulatory environment on the new sheriff in town. Former sheriff in the form of uh, CBN Governor Lamido Salusi will headline the Bank Directors Association of Nigeria Summit, which kicks off next week in the new month of December uh, the 7th on Thursday. Joining us to discuss the regulatory environment for the banking and finance sector on the new leadership is Mr. Chika Mustafa. Mr. Mustafa Chike will be the, C the chair and CEO of the Bank Directors Association of Nigeria. You're very welcome, sir. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. Lots to get into. Let's see if I can take this step by step um, on the quasi intervention um, activities of the CBN uh, of, in the prior uh, regime. Uh, the CBN governor did specifically say during his speech that they distracted the CBN from its activities. He said about 10 trillion Naira was pumped into the economy. What was your reaction uh, to, to that? Well, let me say that, good morning, Rotus again, yeah. that um, we will have a robust reaction to not just Mr. Cardoso's policy directives, but also Mr. Waliado, the CME, was at the same event, mm. and he did make a speech. So I think that it's incumbent on the bank directors to respond to both of them in a more robust and formal manner. But I'll give you some. I think that with policy, with, gov with governance, there's two things. There's the policy itself, and there's the execution of the policy. So you have to have good policies, and then you have to then execute them well to get the result you want. Um, what I heard, all the policy initiatives I heard, I think are very worthwhile, and are fully supported by the, bank, the banking industry. Is it, the devil is in the execution. And so far, as we all know, the execution of worthwhile policies, like subsidy removal, um, plus petrol removal, the unification of the exchange, exchange rate, rate. Yep. they haven't been executed as flawlessly as possible, leading to results that have been less than optimal. So what I would say is, while the policies are very, very good, we welcome consultation with people like BDAN and the banks through other channels, CIBN, so we work together to make sure that the execution is flawless. So policies are good, execution so far has not been that good. Okay, duly noted. Um, speaking of BDAN, speaking of CIB, and speaking of the banks, uh, the CBN governor also said um, that, I mean, he was quoted, of course, in his speech saying, well, up until now, uh, we need to ask ourselves, will Nigerian banks have sufficient capital relative to the financial system's needs in servicing a $1 trillion economy? He said no, and that we need to make some steps, which include recapitalization. I mean, who better than you, <laughs> BDAN, the CIBN, and so on to react to that? What's, what's your reaction on the recapitalization? Exercise Let that. me say that in June, Fidelity Bank, of which I'm chairman, realized that we needed more capital. And we're way down the road. We're going to f complete our capital exercise, prison exercise, probably in the first quarter. It's a six to nine month process. So we know that banks need more capital. And so that part of it is perfectly fine. What we would ask is that the, there's consultations on the amounts of capital that's required by CBN and there's an orderly process so that the banks don't go all into the market at the same time in a short period of time, crowd out the market, because these investments that people are going to invest in banks can be used for other more important things. So there should be a period, I would say three years, over which the CBN gives us a, a time to reach so banks can do it in an orderly fashion. This requires AGMs or EGMs, annual general meetings, extraordinary general meetings, which we had, it requires a lot of processing. So I think that there should be an orderly way to do it. But the objective of more capital is required. Okay. No question about it. But let me address this one trillion dollar economy. Please do. It's a mantra. It's a slogan. It's unachievable within seven years. But it's a good target for us to aim at. We will not get there. I can say that with 100%. It requires a GDP growth rate of over 15% a year. 
which we have never accomplished, and no country has accomplished 15% GDP growth for a seven year period. Mm. China is the closest to it, and they didn't even accomplish that. So we won't get there, but it's a good target. We should aim at that target, and we should do things that will get us close to that target. If I were advising government, I would have said, let's do it in 10 years, which requires a 7% growth. 7% for 10 years will double your GDP. So that's more achievable and more sustainable. Uh, trying to go for 15% GDP will require things that are unsustainable. Just add to it, there was a gentleman that was in the early morning show who said it required $300 billion of investment. And, and that's I, dollars, right? Dollars. I smiled because this country cannot absorb that much capital. There's a capital absorption quality for each economy. Mm. We cannot, if we put in $300 billion in the Nigerian economy today, we will have runaway inflation, we will have wastage, we just can't absorb it. Mm. So, yes, 10 years is achievable. Seven years is not achievable. But it's a good target, and I, I applaud them for the slogan. But we should not make plans based on that slogan. Gotcha. We should know it's something we're aiming at, but we should make plans based on more realistic and sustainable targets. Very honest assessment from you there. Um, there was a report, uh, you've, of course, I've kept up with what's been happening with the devaluation and so on, its impact on banks. Um, Standard Bank Group Security is putting out a report saying that the banks might be vulnerable in terms of capital uh, adequacy. They, they said while the banks look broadly adequately capitalized when compared to the regulatory minimum of 15%, so they are fine, the volatility in the currency has increased the risk of limiting capital adequacy. What's, where do you stand on, on that? That's exactly why Fidelity decided to raise capital. Gotcha. Because it's a true statement. Mm. But let me talk about FX. All right. Because it's very important. The exchange rate is a result of economic policies. It's not an economic policy. Mm. So the focus on exchange rate, A, B, C, D, must be underpinned by, underpinned by what you want your economy to do. I think we all agree. We want the economy to grow. We want employment. And we want more productivity. All of us will agree on that. So what exchange rate regime will support those three goals is what we should be looking at, not starting from exchange rate. I, for one, and I've said it to people who would listen, I prefer stability in exchange rate than the absolute amount. If mm. the CBN tells us tomorrow that we're going to be between 1,000 and 1,200 for the next five years, I think that the, in, the economy will accept that, will adjust to it, and people can plan. Uh, but it's the volatility of the exchange rate that's creating problems. Um, one day is 750 on the official window, next day is 881. We should have a very stable, sustainable exchange rate, and we will adjust to it. Mm. And my guess is that it should be between 1,000 and 1,200. Mm. And we should support it there, maintain it there, so that investors, you'll be surprised at how much investment will come in when the exchange rate is stable. Um, is everything we've talked about so far going to be on the table at the Bank Directors Association of Nigeria Summit next, next week? Yes, we're expecting, the Minister of CME has confirmed that he'll be there. We hope the CBN governor will be there. We hope all other people who, who care about the banking system Certainly, most of the MDs of the banks, they're listening. We expect them to be there. We will lay out a plan in more detail at, that, at, that, um, at the summit. And as you know, uh, the former governor of CBN, former MD of Canada, will be there as a keynote speaker. So I think that we'll flesh these things out in more detail at the summit. Mm. But we want to work with the government. We, we, we think the government is in the right direction and we want to work with them, but we will require some consultation so that they can at least hear where we're coming from, at least from the banking director's point of view. All eyes on the banks. I mean, that's been the big story. So we're looking forward to that summit. Um, it, our, our cameras are live in Abuja. We are waiting to hear from the president when he arrives at the National Assembly to present the budget, 27.5 trillion, upgraded from 26. Uh, yes, those are cameras right there as they await the president who should be arising, arriving any moment. What, what's your take on the budget, especially Considering our population, business they did an analysis, you know, looking at 227 trillion, which is $33 billion versus 200 million people, compared to an Egypt, South Africa, and others that have bigger budgets compared to their um, population. Yeah, so South Africa wanted two billion to 59 yeah, million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, what's your take on, on I that? I thought that was very superficial analysis. Because From business day? It doesn't, it doesn't include the state's budget. Right. Uh, so if we assume the federal government is 52% of our total budget, mm. then you need to gross that up to probably 65 trillion. Okay. 
$65 billion. Mm. Even though that is low, that's a more accurate comparison to, to Egypt that had, runs a different system. Yeah. So it's not exactly like a, for like. Like for like. Yeah. It's still low. But again, like, things have to be done gradually. The problem with execution in Nigeria is that people want to do things too quickly. And then they fail. And then they say it's a bad policy. Mm. So yes, if we go from $65, trillion comparing that to $65 billion comparing to the same number with Egypt, we can, at 7% growth, we can get there. As long as we have a target that's sustainable and achievable, and we're working towards it, we're fine. So the budget is not that bad. It's how do you finance the budget? I think that we should use some contingent liabilities through leveraging our balance sheet to accomplish the budget, not direct borrowing. Direct mm. borrowing is going to create problems for us, and there are ways to do that. Um, the CME knows that there are ways to create a contingent to leverage the balance sheet, and I think he's working on it. Okay. Um, last time uh, we had you on the show, you spoke about the three costly subsidies facing Nigeria, the, a three-headed dragon, if you will, exchange rate subsidy, fuel subsidy, electricity subsidy. Since that time, of course, as you already mentioned, yeah, two of those three have been addressed to some degree. The electricity subsidy, though, that still remains. The power minister said the president is unwilling to remove it for now because of the economic conditions if you combine it with the other two. What, what do you make, for that, make of that? Again, I agree that those subsidies should, should go. I support the fact that they've paused with the fuel subsidy. It should have been over a three-year period. Mm. And it was tried, they tried to do it at once, and the results were disastrous. So they've paused, which you have to respect them for being able to look, look back and say, do it better. So we should do 600 in PMS this year, 800 next year, and then in the third year, go to market, market forces. I think gradualism helps sometimes. Same thing with, uh, with the FX. I'll have, I'll have wanted a gradual over three years. So with, even with the electricity, so once the attitude is to remove useless subsidies and direct the fund to more useful economic development goals, then you do it gradually. So I understand why the president is saying, okay, we've done this too, let's pause on electricity. But we will remove electricity subsidy in due course. Mm. I think that's their bent, I think that's their, that's their direction, and I'm fully supportive of the gradual approach to removing things that people are used to. Mr. Uh, Mustafa Chike will be the chairman and the CEO of the Bank Directors Association of Nigeria. We look forward to that summit uh, next week. We thank you for joining us. We have cameras now going back live to Abuja as we prepare for the president's uh, budget address uh, to the National Assembly. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you show. so much for having me on. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it.